How few people kind of seem to ask that question, in my experience anyway. We, you know, I live in the real world, mate. I've got to get on with my job and my life. Yeah, but who are we? What are we doing? Oh, I'm bothered. We've got to get on with our life. But without this knowledge, this key coordinate, how the hell can we understand what's happening and our part in it? Coordinate number one, we are consciousness. We are not the body we think we are. And the idea is to put us in these eggshells of consciousness. And it's a doddle, a doddle, if we don't hold on to an understanding or have an understanding of who we really are and the magnitude of it. Just a quote from one of my books, only when we know who we are can we know freedom, of course. How can, unless we know the nature of reality and who we are and our part in it, how can we understand the world if we don't understand the reality that is the world? No wonder we're bloody confused. What is reality? How about that question? Oh, no, that's just for scientists. It's not for you. We will watch the football. Nazi propaganda minister Goebbels. It thus becomes vitally important for the state to use all of its powers to repress dissent. For the truth is the mortal enemy of the lie, and thus, by extension, the truth becomes the greatest enemy of the state. And the truth that is most suppressed, the biggest lie of all of them, on which all the others are based, is it's all an illusion. This physical world is not physical, it's not even out there, it's in here. It's a holographic projection, so I'll come to as we go along. It's an illusion of physicality, an illusion of solidity. We are consciousness. And it's so easy to trick the mind-brain to see reality in ways that are not actually what it's looking at. And this is this amazing bloke who draws um, pictures on flat pavements, and yet the mind reads them, the brain reads them as three-dimensional. Does some great stuff. Uh, there's another one. Uh, we, uh, we can look at that as, what, seven compartments, or we can see that as a box. Depends on how the bra brain reads it. These um, color reds are both the same, but because of their interaction and placement with other colors, they look totally different because the brain reads them differently. We are decoding reality and how we decode it decides the reality we experience. Major, major point we need to understand. Einstein, reality is an illusion, albeit a persistent one. Why it's a persistent one we'll come to before we finish this first section. But reality is an illusion and we need to understand that. We think that we are physical bodies and that's who we are. I'm Ethel Jones, Charlie Smith, I'm a taxi driver, I'm a doctor, whatever. No, no! They are what we are experiencing. They're not who we are. There are many multiple levels to us. This is just one that allows us to experience this reality. If I want to pick that up, uh, my consciousness could not pick that up because it's vibrating too quickly. It's not in sync in the uh, frequency range of that, so I couldn't do it. I take on this outer shell that operates within the frequency range that I want to experience. Now I can interact with it. Simple as that. We are consciousness working through a physical body. All life is consciousness. Uh, an energy animating a holographic forms, including plants, everything. We are consciousness. I was in the bath the other day, uh, playing with me duck or something, and I got this picture in my mind, real clear, and my great friend Neil Haig, uh, a brilliant artist, and anytime you see a picture with this style throughout this next seven hours, it's from Neil. He's out the front there if you want to talk to him. And, and he painted this for me when I told him what I, what I, what I saw. And basically it's this, it was, this is consciousness, symbolically, that infinite uh, consciousness that we are, and I saw an eye appear in the, uh, in the consciousness there, 
And out of it came this telescope. And uh, it was looking into this world that we're experiencing. And as um, the telescope appeared, so it morphed into a human body. And that's what the body is. It's a telescope that allows consciousness to experience this reality, this reality of apparent division, um, and have the experience of that. But we've got trapped in the belief that that is the totality of who we are. Consciousness and the body interact during an experience here, but the body is not who we are. It's interesting, this um, energy field we call the aura, whatever, you have energy coming down through the top of the head and out and going the other way, uh, and it's like an electrical um, burst of energy going through the body, which throws out this electromagnetic field that we call the aura. And interestingly, when you do the same with electric wire, you put a uh, current through the wire, it throws out an electromagnetic field. And in the same way that this happens to us, so it happens to the earth. Because everything is a reflection of everything else and works in basically the same way. And this combination of the genetics of the body and the electromagnetic field I call body consciousness. And we have a choice of connecting that body consciousness level of our experience to the great infinite all that is, in which case we will have access to a massively expanded level of awareness and perception and be able to see through what we can't see when we're stuck in the body reality. Or, and that's what this is basically, this eggshell I talk about, it is the body consciousness, the auric field working directly through the body. And if we get isolated in that, then our level of re reality, perception, and what we can perceive and expand our mind to understand is massively uh, suppressed. And this is the situation that we face in this world. People who are infinite consciousness operating at the level of body consciousness. And that's exactly where the manipulators want us. Because if we are not connecting out there and getting our insight, inspiration, intuitive knowing from out there, then where do we look to? to get a fix on who we are and what's happening in the world, we look that way, through the ears and the eyes. And who's controlling that information? Those that control the media, education, etc. Gotcha. <laughs> the body, I call, it, I call it a genetic space suit. And it's kind of funny. You know, if you were, if you were on the moon with someone, and, 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 and the, uh, an astronaut started thinking he was his space suit. I mean, crikey, can you imagine? Hey, Houston, Houston, we've got a problem. Bill thinks he's his space suit. He's bloody mad because he's not his space suit. Yeah, but we think we're our space suit. And what would there be in that situation on the moon? There would be chaos. Well, that's why there's chaos here, because we believe we're our space suit. That's what makes racism so insane. It's like saying, uh, I'm better than you because my spacesuit's different colour. Bloody ridiculous. But the cutting edge of human knowledge, so why should, I, why should I complain? We are consciousness working through the body. Now I've got a real, I've got a real um, uh, um, amazing feeling for this. Uh, about two years ago, just before I last spoke here, when my mother died, Barbara, and I went along to... Uh, the funeral, obviously, and my, my brother had organized it. And he said to me, do you want to come and see, want to come and see uh, your mum while uh, in the uh, mortuary um, or at the funeral parlor? And I, my immediate reaction was, no, no, I'll remember where she was, because it's just a body anyway. But something said, no, go, 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 go. And for some reason in my life, I've never come across, the first time I've seen a, a dead body was my mother. And uh, I turn up, and I walk in this room, and there's this body in this coffin, this open coffin. 
And I know it sounds ridiculous, 